We are going to go over topic five, one, nth roots, radicals, and rational ex exponents, example one. So as we reviewed before in our introduction, we have exponential form, and we can just reconfigure some of our, um, our exponents and our base and put our expression into radical form. So we are asked, what are all the real cube roots of 125? Well, if you're looking at a cube, that is an index of three. And 125, well, that's going to be my C. So that means I have X equals the cube root of 125. That's radical form. Now let's move this into exponential form. Exponential form, we have X raised to the third power equals 125. Now, if you think about it a little bit, well, we know 5 to the third equals 125. So therefore, we know already know that 5 is a real root. But are there others? And if you remember from our studies in topic three, you have a third degree polynomial, you have three zeros. Zeros and roots are the same thing, different terminology. So I should have three roots. So let's see if we can find the others. Now, keep in mind here too, let's throw this in. If you have an odd degree, so we have an odd degree here, three is an odd degree, you're going to have an odd number of real roots. If you have an even degree, you will have an even number of real roots. And you might also have made the connection too, if we have complex zeros, if you've noticed, they always come in pairs. You will always have a plus and a minus. So whenever you have a complex zero, those should come into pairs. Odd degree, odd number of real roots, even degree, even number of real roots. So now let's break this down and we're going to use a lot of what we learned in topic three to explore this a little more. So if I have X to the third equals 125 and I want to solve that, find my zeros, find my roots, I'm going to subtract 125 from both sides. X cubed minus 125 equals zero. And now we're going to factor this. And as you may recall, this is the difference of cubes. That's one of our polynomial IDs. So this breaks down as a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. My a here, these are easy, a equals x and my b, cube root of 125, we already talked about it, that's going to be five. So that means we're going to expand. And you're going to get, let's write this out. You're gonna get, let's do x cubed minus 125 is the same as a minus b, so that's x minus 5 times a squared, x squared, plus 
a times b, so that's 5x, plus b squared, which is 25. Now, if you set each of these factors equal to zero, okay, well, here we get x equals five. That's our real root. And we already determined that. We could see that easily right here. But again, what about the others? Now, this we would have to factor but that is not going to be easy to factor. So before I go plugging away at um, the quadratic formula, let's even see if I have any real zeros or real roots within this trinomial. Now, if you can remember too, this goes back to topic two, six. We're gonna use the discriminant. And that discriminant is going to tell me whether or not I have real solutions here. So your discriminant, if you recall, is the what's underneath the radical of your quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. My b here is 5 minus 4. My a value is 1. My c value is 25. 5 squared is 25. Uh, this is minus 100. So I get a negative 75. If you get a negative number in your discriminant, you have no real solutions. This is two complex solutions. Or two complex roots. So our answer here is x equals 5 is the only real root. Let's do another. B. What are the real fourth roots of 16? Okay, so here, fourth, that means my index is four, and my C is 16. So this is X equals fourth root of 16. To move this into exponential form, we have x to the fourth equals 16. We already know that answer, don't we? It's two. Let's go ahead, let's explore this though. So I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. x to the fourth minus 16 equals zero. Let's factor. This is the difference of squares. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Forget you have a plus, you get a minus. Square root of 16 is four. Let's make a note here that was difference of squares. So here, if I have x squared plus four equals zero. And I'm going to have x squared minus four equals zero. So this one, I could do difference of squares on this again, or I can solve using the square root property, which I think is how I'm going to approach this one. Let's take a look at this. If I do this using my square root property, I'm gonna subtract the four from both sides. x squared equals negative four. Uh, I got to get rid of that square. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. X equals here. I'm going to do a plus minus because I am solving. 
square root of negative four. I have a negative under that radical, which means I have complex solutions. So x equals plus or minus square root of four is two. That negative one comes out as an i. So here I have two complex roots, solutions, zeros, same thing. Now let's do it over here. I'm going to add four to both sides. x squared equals four. Take the square root of both sides. Square root will cancel out the square. X equals plus or minus the square root of four. X equals plus minus two. So here's my real root. I get X equals a negative two. And X equals a positive two. Those are my real roots. These are complex. Let's do another. This is one of your triads. Actually, you know what? Let me put this here. And I'm going to let you pause the video and try it and then come back. So let's see if you can find the real fourth roots of 81. And again, look for those imaginary ones as well. Go ahead, pause the video, see if you can try it, and then come on back and we'll go through it together. Okay, so here we go. Real fourth roots of 81, which means I am looking for the fourth root of 81. To write this in exponential form, Gets us x to the fourth equals 81. Let's subtract 81 from both sides. x to the fourth minus 81 equals zero. Now we need to factor. This is difference of squares. Notice you've got subtraction. That's difference. x to the fourth is a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. So let's break this down. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. I'm going to have a plus. I'm going to have a minus. Square root of 81 is 9. Okay, let's go ahead. Set each factor equal to 0 to solve. Here again, you could do difference of squares again, factor and solve. I'm going to use, do it using the square root method. Square root property, excuse me. Let me subtract 9 from both sides. I'll take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. And right away, you have a negative underneath the radical. That's an imaginary number. These are complex solutions. Square root of nine is three. You have that negative there that comes out as an I. So these are your complex solutions, zeros, roots, etc. Now here, I'm gonna add nine to both sides. I get X squared. Oops, why did I put a nine there? I was jumping ahead, that should be zero. My bad. X squared equals nine. Take the square root of both sides. X equals plus or minus the square root of nine. Square root of nine is three. So I get X equals plus or minus three. And here's my real solutions. X equals negative three and X equals positive three. 